Looking at classic cars in the 21st century to me is classified as another form of art. The curvaceous lines, single headlights, large grills, and that raw approach to the fundamentals that define the word automobile is simply brilliant. What we have before us is the exquisite Maserati 3500 GT. These cars were built from 1957 to 1964. There was two series that came out, a Series 1 being the carburetor GT model and a Series 2. Both share that 3.5 litre inline six cylinder that produces 220 horsepower in the carbureted version and 235 horsepower with the Lucas fuel injected model. This car was so ahead of its time, we're talking about 1961, it was the first Maserati model to introduce fuel injection. So this engine has 15 horsepower more than the carbureted model. And what Maserati did do was they built this car upon the Superleggera painted, which means super lightweight. What that is, is a steel tubular chassis and frame around the whole car with aluminium panels installed. So every panel on this car is made out of lightweight aluminium. This gives it a total curb weight of 1,300 kilograms across the Series 1 and Series 2 car. Maserati produced 937 Series 1 cars and 441 Series 2. This particular example right here is a 1964 3500 GTI, but it was custom ordered for its first German owner to feature the carbureted engine of the 3500 Series 1 installed on the 3500 Series 2 car with the new bodywork and the new mechanicals. We'll get into that further. First of all, the paint job was a special request. It's called Blue Setter with a Rosso interior, meaning red leather interior. The car also had disc brakes across all four wheels, which Series 1 cars never featured until the end of Series 1 back in 1961, when the introduction of the Series 2 car came about. Let's talk about the differences between the Series 2 and Series 1. First up, we have the new revised front grille. This is wider, more aggressive looking. It gives it a better stance on the road. It is one change that I appreciate and welcome for the Maserati 3500. Number two, we've got the front indicator lights. Now they're rectangular. Before they were round in the Series 1. Then over to the side indicators, they're slightly changed. But the major improvement is the revised roof line. It is now lower and stretched out so it's longer. It gives it that better, more appealing GT look. And at the rear, we've got the new tower lights. And finally, we have what Maserati calls the vent windows. So these two windows here that open up allow air for the passenger and driver whilst driving. Looking at an engine bay from the 1960s shows you how the mechanics back then built them. But I don't call them mechanics, they're artisans. Look at it. In this day and age, you will never find an engine bay that looks this beautiful. We've got three Weber carburetors sitting right in front of us with the inline six cylinder derived from the Maserati 350S race car. So a race car engine in this car, detuned obviously. There is nothing in this engine bay that is out of whack. Everything that you see is simply there for use. There is no extra electronics. We're talking about raw, sheer, carbureted power. So the difference again between the GTI model injected engine was a 235 horsepower but this car benefited from having the carburetors which gives it only 220 horsepower but it gives you that raw feel and that sound of the carburetors breathing air in and out now this to me is true art 
Maserati made both the chassis and engine in-house, but what they couldn't make were the components. At the time, there was a shortage in Italy of proper parts. So they had to go to England to purchase the best parts in the world, and that they did. We're talking about Alfred and Alda suspension, Salisbury rear axle, ZF gearbox, and Girling disc brakes. Simply beautiful. Let's talk about the restoration process of this car. It took a total of a strenuous three and a half years to restore this example that you see before you today. It was a complete nut and bolt restoration, meaning the car was on a rotisserie, sandblasted, all rust panels removed, new panels installed and welded, new paint, primer, the whole thing was a very long job. Bodywork in total was at least one and a half years. Interior was another half a year. To source the mechanics and the parts required to finish the car today took a total of three years. The last part to arrive was a regeneration unit and that in itself took four months to source. An endless cost and hours involved in a full restoration to this level of today, which is a concourse level restoration. So what we're talking about are things like these tower lights. They disintegrate over time because they're only plastic lenses. It sometimes took up to 50 different suppliers to source only two parts for this car, calling all over the globe. So there are parts on this car, completely original Maserati, but purchased from Italy, Germany, France, England, across Australia and the USA. Not to mention the one item that needed to be purchased from New Zealand, which some lovely, lovely old bloke actually had in his collection with his own 3500 that he restored himself. Car like this is very precious today. Values keep going up and up. There is nothing that's gonna turn back time. And this, my friends, is a time capsule here today. The sheer elegance of this interior, everything has been restored back to original. The hide that you see before you has been sourced from Maserati themselves. It's Rosso Pell, red leather. Original grain with the original roof lining and the carpets as well. Everything is as per the car was back in 1964. The same colors, the same material, the same grain finish. What we also have done was restore every instrument installed on this car, including the clock. So everything's been pulled apart meticulously, including every nut and bolt has been re-chromed. The surrounding chrome rings have been re-chromed. The glass has also been polished up to look brand new. Nothing has deviated from the original state that it was, including the original radio installed on the dashboard. One thing is for sure, that Italians love the smoking. Back in the 50s and 60s, they used to smoke in the car. And one thing that Maserati hasn't forgotten is to install an actual ashtray and a cigarette lighter in this car. It's time to listen to the sheer brilliance of this mechanical engineering. What a nostalgic moment driving the automotive engineering marvel they call the Maserati 3500 GT. An inline six with a carbureted motor and five speed manual gearbox. Every time you slot into gear, it is so smooth. The car's been restored back to originality. Nothing's been changed. So the way it revs, the way it drives, is exactly like it was from day one from the factory. And let me tell you, it is simply raw and divine to drive. I love the sounds of the carbureted motor. Everything about it is just fun the aspect of a perfect Sunday car. Yes, it does have a bumpy ride because it is old suspension and it doesn't have any electronic aids whatsoever, but that is better. So when you listen to this, you rev it up, oh, 
you can hear that drop a gear and you press the accelerator and boy does it take off. The way it sits ergonomically, I am centered. Everything is perfect about this car. So what I have to say is perfection at its greatest. Thank you Maserati for producing one of the most beautiful automotive arts ever created.